this girl, the girl that I want you to meet today, is basically polyglot. What is a polyglot? A person that speaks a lot of languages. That's correct. The interesting thing about a polyglot is that they have the ability to perfect their speech by memorizing and learning words, expanding the vocabulary and then collocating the vocabulary in the correct position, right? Imagine how difficult it would be to do more than two languages, no? In this moment, English is a very big challenge. So what is the methodology they use? Because the methodology they use can actually make us enhance the English that we have today. So let's check what they do. I want you to when when the video is over, please explain it to me. So if you want to take notes, if you let's uh, open a notebook, let's uh, take an, a pen, and whenever you're ready, please give me a thumbs up to understand that you're ready to listen. What's up, Chris? Hello, teacher. Hello, brother. Perfect. Let's listen to her. Tell me if this has ever happened to you before. You learn a word and you forget it after a week. How do you fix that? How do we break the cycle of relearning and remember the words that we learn for longer? Maybe even forever? I can tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep pushing my pen and rotating my stylus. Hi, my name is Elise Tavega. I've studied over 10 languages and you might be wondering how I remember all those goddamn words. Today, I want to tell you guys how I make vocabulary stick in any language. It's just five tips, but these five methods have made such a world of difference in my language learning. I forgot to ask, how are you doing today? Good. I'm glad. Good. Not good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whether you're good, bad, somewhere in between, we still gotta make this video, so let's dive right in. So the first piece of advice I have for you, a person wanting to improve in vocabulary, is to study vocabulary in context, always. This is like my, my the, this is the first commandment of learning vocabulary. This is something you can do even from a beginner stage. So studying in context just means always studying the word in the context of a phrase or a sentence, not just like a solitary word hanging out in a vacuum. So when I make flashcards in French, for example, if I'm if the word is penser, for example, to think, I'm not just gonna write penser in its unconjugated infinitive form. I'm gonna put maybe a sentence like qu'est-ce que tu penses? What do you think? This serves me so much more and is so much more useful than just like like I said, like a solitary word hanging out in a vacuum. It's in context. Where's my kitty? It's real. It's in context. It's applied, and it's something that you're gonna use a ton in conversation. If you learn words in the phrases and situations which they're most likely to be used in, or at least some of them, when you end up in these situations in real life, you can respond quicker because, you know, the gears aren't turning while you conjugate a verb, you know, the gears in your brain aren't turning while you try to decline this noun or something like that. It's just much easier to apply it and recall it. Moving on, my next piece of advice is just called see it and hear it. So on this one, I'm not really talking about when you're practicing vocabulary, but more when you first learn it. I think that when you first encounter a word through like a, a TV show or a podcast or a movie or something like that, if you're seeing the word when you hear it, it sticks so much better from that point on. So like, instead of just listening to a podcast, listen to it while you read a transcript. There's so many language learning podcasts that offer transcripts nowadays. Instead of just watching a video or a movie, watch it with subtitles. Even if it's just the crappy YouTube auto-generated subtitles, it's something, okay? Aside from YouTube, there's Netflix. They always have subtitles in a ton of languages. Um, if you want to use Language Reactor, you can have double subtitles. But real quick, if we're talking subtitles, I have to recommend LingoPie. LingoPie is basically just like a subscription-based on-demand streaming service specifically for language learners. My favorite thing about LingoPie is their interactive subtitles. So you can have just subtitles in one language, you can have them in two languages at a time, or you can do what's called like the mashup option where it'll kind of mix them. And if you don't know a word while you're watching, all you have to do is click on it and it'll give you the definition 
information and it'll save it automatically into a flashcard deck for you like for that specific show or movie or whatever you're watching and every time you click on five words like after five words it'll auto generate a pop quiz for you so that you can check your comprehension while you're viewing and i think that's so cool because a lot of the times when we consume content it's always like we watch it and then we practice it after but but this is like a lot more, I guess, like intertwined approach. So if you want to try out LingoPie, I will leave a link down in the description. Um, you can get a seven day trial completely for free. Tell them I sent you, okay? Okay. Okay, so this next tip, I would really only recommend it to people who have reached B2 or an equivalent level in their target languages. It's kind of like advanced. Study in the language. This means not just translating the target language into your native or your reference language all the time, but trying to immerse yourself fully. This can be applied in a ton of ways, but uh, one way that I apply this is through flashcards. So like when I make my flashcards in French, I don't put it like French to English, it's just French to French. This way you have to kind of explain the word with words that you already know. Like you're learning a ton of synonyms, you're building a network of vocabulary, like a, a word net, you know? Everything Everything kind of just starts to connect together. So in my French flashcards, it'll say like cacher, to hide, and then dissimuler, which is another word pretty much for cacher. Another way to apply this is by writing your notes completely in your target language. So instead of like writing out the explanations in your native language or your reference language, like I said, just do it all in your target language. Yet another way, um, you could, if you're using like an app like Buzu or oh, Duolingo, put the app on your phone or the desktop version in your target language. So like you can do this from the settings a lot of the time. If you go to like interface language or a lot of times if you change the language of your device in general, it'll automatically switch over, which is very cool. Studying 100% in your target language is so beneficial for so many reasons. It's, you know, it's a great way to immerse by yourself. And because you're not just learning the concept, you're also learning how to explain the concept. You know, you're learning it from both sides, back and forth. You know, you're like a double agent. You're the student and the teacher. That's dope. So my next tip is to produce the word closer to your first encounter counter with the word. I really think that the sooner you have output with the word, the sooner you produce the word, the better you're going to remember it in the long run. That's just my impression from like my personal experience. Here's some ways that you can apply this. So let's say when you're making a vocabulary list, a lot of the times what we do, we just write down the vocab word and then we write down the translation like immediately. But what I do, let's say I'm watching an episode of TV in French because I have been watching a lot of TV in French recently. So what I do is I write down the words, but I don't write down like a translation or an equivalent word immediately. I just write down the word that I want. I finish my list, I finish the episode, and then at the end I go through and add like all the equivalents or all the translations. It's kind of like the first test that I give myself to see like, okay, can I remember these words that I learned 45 minutes ago? You know, it's the first chance to produce it. And while we're talking about vocabulary lists, another way to practice new vocabulary sooner is just by reading them out loud after you write them down. You know, it's your first chance to practice pronunciation of these words. You can compare your pronunciation to native speakers on Forvo, which is like an online pronunciation dictionary. You could also take these words and write sentences with them and maybe get corrections. Uh, you could put them in a paragraph, try to use as many of them in a paragraph as you can. So yeah, when you're done collecting your words, maybe take a little break, 20 to 30 minutes, but come back to them and just kind of try them out in different ways and get your first go around with the words. Okay, this is my last and final tip to you okay grasshopper active recall versus passive recall what does this mean this sounds so scientific so scary at least what is that it's so simple it literally just means prompting yourself in your target language versus prompting yourself in your native language or your reference language I, in this case i'm talking mostly about flashcards but you can apply this in a lot of different ways um so like for example with my flashcards when i'm doing french flashcards if they have English on one side, which I don't really do that anymore, but back in the day, I would start with the English side and then go to the French side because it's so much easier to like see a word in your target language and be like, oh, I remember that and match it to an idea in your native language than it is to see the word in your native language first and have to come up with the word in your target language. It's the difference between like recognizing and actually producing the word, okay? This is a bigger challenge and I feel like if you're able to recall something in a more difficult context and do that over and over, it'll stick with you for longer. Like I've worked as a translator before and I always found it a lot harder to translate stuff from my native language, English, into a different language than vice versa. So start doing that. Give yourself that challenge. I believe in you, believe in yourself push yourself, never give up. <laughs> what am I doing? And that is it, my friends. Those are my five pieces of advice for you to remember words in your languages for longer. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time. If you want to follow me on social media, it is just awesome.
Great tips. It's like sometimes I hear these people and it's there, there are things that we actually do today that we totally forget. Forget that that we do sometimes. And there are some things that I consider sometimes very obvious that we everybody should do. And then I discover that my students don't do. So I want to see if you actually understood what is the um the difference on 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 the five different tips that she gave us. Okay. There were five different tips, very, very important tips. I do all of them, <laughs> which is super cool. I want to know if you do them too, okay? That's what I want you to do. So let's go directly to one of the first tips. Anyone? Who remembers any of the tips she gave? Uh, the first one? The first one. What was the first one, brother? The first one was study uh, vocabulary in context. Excellent. Vocabulary in context. What did she say about that? Or what do you remember about those words? What she said? Well, she mentioned that it's better study, uh, study vocabulary in context. When this, she means to study words in um, phrases and see how is the content of those words and stop study words in single. Right. Mm -hmm. With words that what? There was something about common phrases or words that they're commonly together with. So if you, she, she put the word on, on the word think in French, no? If you have the word think, what is the first example that comes to my mind? Mm. Can you repeat? Sure. She, she put the example of the word think, mm -hmm. right? If you think on the word think, no, what is the first example that come up to your mind? Try to imagine I an think. example. I think, perfect. That's one of the first phrases that we learn when we speak English. When we give, it a, when we, we give an opinion, we say, I think. Then we have words like, uh, what do you think? What do you think about it? And then we have words like, uh, let me think. And then I discover that intermediate people forget to imagine that word in past. And we never say, for example, oh, I thought about it. Oh, I thought we were going to a different thing. Oh, I thought a different thing. Then we can use one word and you can expand your knowledge with different contexts and different, different situations. And all those situations will give you more memorization because you will use them in different situations. So when we are talking about context, I want you to think in situations. Let's try, for example, one random word. Okay, let's go home and let's see the word extinction. This is the day of the word, the, the, the word of the day. The extinction is a B2. In what situations have you seen this word? What's the first thing, the first situation that comes to your mind when you read the word extinction? Dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. Perfect. You read it on dinosaurs. Um, how often do you see these words? Mm, 
Not very often. Agreed. Mm -hmm. The first thing that came to my mind, you know what was? The um the title of the the last one of the last Transformers movie. The fourth one is called Age of Extinction. No, the third one is called Age of Extinction. No, the the fourth one, because that was the one when the dinosaurs appear. Remember that title because I remember I hated that movie. I remember how boring and horrible and all you know, of them are really, really bad. No, 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 no. Oh, my, my yes, cousin, all... no. Yes, my cousin is not a good director. Oh, Isaac, what are you doing? <laughs> the original Transformers is amazing. What are you talking about? The, the cartoons? No, 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 no. The one with <laughs> oh. Megan Fox. <laughs> Wait, I don't remember the, the name of the actor. Shia LaBeouf. No, yes, I, I don't like him. You don't like Shia LaBeouf, but he's amazing. <laughs> he's my idol. He he's I am him. Okay. Yeah. If you hate him, he confirms that he hates him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you hate him, that means that you hate him. No, I I just say I don't like him. I I didn't say I I hate him. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> but he doesn't say that <laughs> you don't like him. <laughs> uh, but at, at least minimum, it's not he doesn't hate him. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> that's uh, exactly that's a uh, half a point for me. <laughs> well, imagine if I consider that trash is amazing. Imagine I, I how said, bad actually. is this. Uh -huh. <laughs> Imagine how bad is this? You know, like it was just a waste of money and time. Like, no, I think uh, uh, did we did we go to the movies to to watch this? I think we went. No, yes. Yes, 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 yeah. I'm sorry for your money, guys, and for your time. <laughs> in in the name of Michael Bay, really, I am sorry. It was a horrendous time. And the movie like three hours. No, no, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the reason. That's the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear the word extinction. I remember how I prefer, I prefer dinosaurs. You prefer dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. That's not a way to say it. And I think there's a there's a Jurassic Park, there's a Jurassic World movie called Extinction something. I don't remember why. So then contexts that's the whole point think about something that you that comes in your, into your mind have you ever seen the movie slumdog millionaire not complete not complete wow you didn't see it completely well you have an uh, an idea of what happens right yeah Forgetting about the ending, how did he associate the answers of the questions? Oh, with, with experiences and with memories. And memories. Mm -hmm. So this is what you have to do with your, with your vocabulary. Whenever you are reading a new word and you don't understand it, you see a very, very strange word, this is your opportunity to find a situation. Many, of, many students in your level never use this word. In what situations could you find a preposition? That would be impossible, right? What is the situation here? Find an example together with the the word that comes together. What dictionary do we use for this? What is your dictionary do we use to find words that are go together?
Mm, you don't remember? Mm -hmm. My million? That means that you are not using it. I am so, so sad. Let me show it to you. Um, what is this? Let's go to the word. Where is it? Upon, 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 full text. Look at this. We cannot think of a situation with the word upon. But we can think of situations with the word agree upon, depend upon, draw upon, enter upon, etc. Let's see the first example. Agree upon. The birth plus solution attempts to find a comprehensive political solution to the crisis. Let's replace the word solution. Attempts to find a comprehensive political agreement upon to the crisis. And it's the same thing, but now we are getting into context. Those difficult words are the ones that you need to start finding out situations. Agree upon. What comes to your mind when you hear the word agree? Help me, Elsie, for example. Can you repeat the question? Sure. What situations come to your mind when you hear the word agree? Agree. Mm. When the two parts um, Think the same about a situation or, or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, opinion. Do you, what do you think then can be agreed upon? You know, agree upon, you need, after the, the word upon, you need a noun such as um, upon the topic, upon the discussion, upon the, um, the issue, mm -hmm. the matter. What situation comes to your mind? Mm, mm, I don't know, maybe uh, make a deal. I like it. Upon the deal, we can say that. Upon the deal? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have an example? Can you build one? Mm. Maybe your <clears throat> the provider and the dealer mm -hmm. uh, upon the deal about the credit. You forgot the verb. Agreed. Oh, um, the provider and. The dealer agreed upon the credit? That's correct. That's precisely the point. Then you found an example to use a very strange word, such as a <laughs> You see? It's about curiosity. It's about exploring the tools that you have. Good job. Etc. That's why the context is so important. It's not only a random word. There are like specifically those words that you cannot find context to. You can make it have context if you put other words at next to them, and that becomes super easy. Then you have to just memorize the rest of them. Look at the rest of the phrasal verbs you have in the list that I showed you. Mm -hmm. 
it's now your turn to understand what is depend upon, draw, enter, hit, inflict, set, smile, and then find examples, explore them, and it becomes super easy. Any question on the first tip? Me today. Awesome. What other tip do you remember from the video? There is one that said, uh, see it and hear it. See it and hear it. You know what? That's actually the second one. Can you tell us about that one? Yes, I understand that it's better if you can um, see and hear the word at the same time. For example, uh, when you are listening to a podcast, uh, you can uh, well, look for the transcription. Is it transcription? Yes. Uh, and it will help you to, to understand. Uh, I think that it's something really useful because you can... Uh, notice the pronunciation, the pronunciation, and also the how how do you have to write the word. Mm -hmm. totally so it, help, it, it helps you to to link the the word with the sounds and 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 it's I I I was thinking that it's something that happened a lot. Not that we usually read. Oh, we usually read, sorry, words as they as if they have the same pronunciation than in Spanish, if the letters have the same pronunciation than in Spanish. Right. So it will help to correct maybe those mistakes. You touched the point that I wanted to reach. Yes, of course. If you are reading and hearing at the same time, your brain is going to link letters in a very, very different way. Because before these lessons, your brain was linking English words with Spanish pronunciation. And then you have words like uh, have to, you know? And then the pronunciation like sounds very abstract. It's not English. It, it is English, but it sounds not like English. What was going on there? It's phonetics, it's pronunciation, as you say. So with difficult words, can actually help you. For example, look, look at this word, acquiring. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Even when it's in front of you, many students would say acquiring because in Spanish it's adquirir con una D. And that, that's enough to make the, the student pronounce it very, very differently. Even when it's in front of you. Yeah. So, after the 10th, 14th, 20th time you see the word, you start noticing, oh, wait, there's no D, you know? Mm -hmm. And that usually happens after the 30th time, not the first two. That's the reason exposition to the language is so important. See it and hear it. What tools do you use to see it and hear it? Um, I think that he mentioned one, and that is something that I think that we we all all of us have access to Netflix. Yep, it was a service, no? Yes, and and she mentioned other resources, but I think that the one that I use more often is um, Netflix. Okay, how do you do that? Uh, I usually watch series or movies in English with uh, subtitles in English also. Good. And uh, and also, <laughs> again, I will mention the, the podcast, The Science Versus, because you can find the scripts on internet <laughs> for all the episodes. Yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything. Everything exists in, in, uh, on the internet if you'll know how to look for it. Uh, you yeah. can... You can print the um the the scripts of movies if you want to that's a lot of work you know if you like for example to to watch movies on 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 the computer i suggest you download this have i told you about language reactor no i don't think so 
No, never. No. I haven't hear about it. Interesting. So you installed your, your Chrome uh, add-on and you will get this language reactor, okay? And with the language reactor, you open Netflix and what happens with Netflix is that it will give you exactly the same, the same uh, things that the person was saying. The girl from the video had to. Yes, I remember that one. Right, two, two captions. The first one, which is the original one and the, the target language on top. In your case, it will be the opposite. So what you can do is to click and or to put your, your cursor on top of the word that you wanna learn and you get all this information. And here have asunto, affair, matter, affair, thing, issue, subject, topic. In this specific context, it's issue. You see? Yes, that's really useful. Super. The negative part, I understand. You need time. You need free time. <laughs> yes. To do this. That's the only negative thing that I see on, on this. If you have free time and you like to spend it learning languages, there it is. It works with Netflix. It works with books. It works with YouTube. It works with a lot of stuff. Oh, this is new. You can have a digital AI girlfriend or boyfriend if you want to. <laughs> You can give it a name and a profession, everything. That's weird. Like you have no, no, I have seven. Ah, okay, then it's normal. Uh huh. It's very normal. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Robotella. Robotella is my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending you the link. Language reactor. Mm -hmm. Yes, I actually am looking for it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine I will send it to you. Yeah, thanks. An extension. That's a good and... thing about it. <laughs> so you select here your target language. You know, in my case, it's Japanese, and I wanted to translate it to English. And then it gives me all this information. I go to media. And then you will see, I have all these options, all right? I wanna see Akira with both subtitles and nothing happens, you see? That's because it's, I don't have Netflix, but you can use, for example, YouTube. Now here it is, people talking in Japanese, sumimasen, and I can learn. Sumimasen, ano, kono apato ni... That's the subtitle romanized or with kanjis and with the subtitle. Sumimasen. Okay. Super cool. Super, super cool. Language reactor, see it and hear it. That's my option I give you. That's an alternative I give you because the option she gave us was super boring. It was like content, <laughs> generic content that I don't know if it's cool. Anyway, next, what other tip do you remember, Silvana? Do you remember any other tip on what she said? Did you see the video? I don't remember if you were here when I played it. No, well, I just see like three minutes. No, less, mm -hmm. <laughs> like one minute. That's great. Um, I... What? That's great, that's great. What did you hear? Um, the part when she says that uh, you can uh, watch a movie and uh, or an episode like she does and then uh, write all the new words that you don't know um, but not thinking 
Eh, ah, well, I, I think that what Christian says, no? Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I don't remember that if she, she says that you don't immediately write it. But that uh, because that helps you to memorize it till, uh, till the end of the video. Yes. Well, the episode. That gives you all the the, the 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 things for memorization. That's kind of similar to what we saw with context, but there was some other things specifically for when you are writing the the new word. There was something in particular that she suggested. Something else you that you don't um no I I remember that she says that you should not uh, translate you o sea, don't uh, put the word um, in your language right. uh, just in front of the other one mm -hmm. uh, okay. but no I don't remember other things it was something going that was precisely the mistake that we do. And the solution to that was to, to build, a, number one, an example, right? To give it context. But number two, to conjugate that word in different, different situations, which is something very similar to what we said at the beginning of the course, the glossary. Whenever you find a new word, you should type, write, and hunt other, other examples. That's definitely the, the solution. Okay, let's give a moment to Jesse because she's in the chat. Hello, Jess. Hello, teacher. Good night. Good night, everyone. I will take attendance, please. Is he... Christian, hello, Christian. Good night. Hello. Thank you, Christian. Isaac, hello, Isaac. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you. Sil, hello, Sil. Good night. Hello, Jesse. Good night. Thank you, Sil. Ah, Nelsie. Hello, Elsie. Welcome back. Good night. Hello, Jesse. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. And see you. Thank you, Milady. Good night. Bye bye. All right. So we say third, four, and five. Do you remember anything in third, four, and five? Uh, the third one, I, I don't remember that one. The, the fourth mm -hmm. was that you uh, should recommend, she recommends to study in the language that you want to learn, no? Oh, uh, yes. Basically, I understood that is to get involved in the language, no? That I, in the, I, I don't remember if, if she used the word in, immerse in the language or something similar, no? Emails? In, immerse. Ah, immerse, immersive. Uh -huh, something like that. I don't remember to be honest that the, the word. But yes, I, I understood that it was like just yeah, like to change your mind to, to the language that you want to learn, no? Totally, totally right. How often do you use Google whenever you have a question? Every day. How often do you type that question in English? Every day because uh, my office computers are in English. For real? Yeah. That's why. That's why you have improved so much so quickly. That makes total sense. Yeah. That makes total uh, sense. Actually, we don't have any in our keyboard. Right, and that's why you notice uh, expression so quickly. That's mm -hmm. effective. Mm -hmm. Not as quickly as I would like, but maybe, yes. <laughs> of course, that's always going to be a challenge to, to, to improve and to find perfection, you know, but, but in, the progress is there and it needs evident. That's why these little, little helps are the ones that we, that, that is going to help you. Everything I search, everything I want to investigate, everyone I want, every research I want to do, recipes for my for my food every day. Whenever I feel curious about what's the this morning actually, I wanted to figure out how to make bolognese in my house. 
I, I searched a video and I searched um, uh, a tutorial in English with English um, ingredients. In Jesus, now what is the name of this plant in Spanish? In Jesus, what is the name of this thing in the supermarket? But eventually it comes up. So that was a very, very good thing, man. Good news. Very good news. Yeah. What about the rest? How often do you type that question in Google in English? In my case, very often. Very often too? Really? Yeah, especially in my work, because as you know, uh, the technologies mainly are, I, I mean, the documentation of technologies are mainly in English. So uh, using Google to find results in English normally give me more, more results than in Spanish. There's always more and bigger and better information in English. Sorry. Yeah. Totally true. Well, how about yeah, else? It, oh, sorry, man. Yeah. And with more results, you can find a accurate response. Exactly. And you can never have a better response if you don't have enough information. The most accurate is directly from English to English. Why? Why the necessity to pass the Spanish the, uh, investigation and then pass it to English? No. Same thing. What about Elsie? How often do you search and research in English? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not much. Because... Not that often. That's your <laughs> no. mission. That's your homework. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You have TikTok, you have uh, Instagram, you have uh, Google for every everything you do. This is oh, your opportunity. I have my social media, only TikTok in English, and also my cell phone. But when I when I ask a question to Google, it's in Spanish. That okay, so that's important. Then you can start. You're gonna start doing some other things. That's precisely the thing that I sometimes, that I was telling you at the beginning. Sometimes it seems so obvious to do that, but we don't do it because it's actually a little bit kind of. I have like I, I have never thought about it. Probably, probably this is an idea for you in this moment. No. So there you have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can start today. You have a question. Ask it in English. And, and even that's going to help us, guys. We are in B2 level of English, and we still struggle asking questions. The, the, the structure of the, the, the auxiliary and using the verb in the correct form and all those details can be solved if you practice speaking English in, in Google. Easy. So that's your mission, guys. Try to do that. For number four and number five, we are going to check them tomorrow to keep talking, okay? Meanwhile, have a very good night. Set your phones in English. You have no reason why to use it in Spanish, right? I'll see you guys okay. for today. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. See you. See you Thank later. Thank you. See you, everyone.